Right, boys and girls, I played Throne of Liberty hours and hours and hours from the launch till this day, and I tried everything what is possible in the game, which is how many hours? December 7th, more than 300 hours. And this is my review about the game. Everything that you need to know will be in this video that I will make as short as possible. So let's go. My name is PLK. Thank you for your subscriptions and this community is growing so fast. Guys, love you. Subscribe, like the video and let's go. So let's start with the character creation. Character creation in this game as good as in all other Korean MMORPGs with realistic graphics. Let's take Black Desert Online. It's something similar to Black Desert. You have many cool presets of the interesting looking dudes, different hairstyles, beautiful girls, and they're really beautiful there. That's why we like Korean MMORPGs, right? They don't care about the standards of the beauty in the world. Chicks should be hot. The guys should be hot. Everybody is hot. So character creation is nothing unusual and it's pretty good. Next topic will be story. Story in this game is like in all MMORPGs. It's not the main thing. But still we have a story and 10 to 20 to 30 levels you will be going through the main quest and it will be kind of interesting. If in short you are chosen one, you have some kind of magic, you will encounter different historical moments in the past and you will figure out why it's happening with this land and how to help it and who is this main villain and you know, always same stuff. But the thing is, as I said, like first 10 to 20 levels, you will be playing like a single player game with somebody running around. And after level 50, it will be completely MMORPG where you don't care about lore and story at all. Leveling and questing. What they change after all these beta tests and what experience did we have in Korean launch? The leveling is super easy and fast. You're basically making through the main quest to level 30, then you do some additional quests for, you know, weapon and accessories, the side quests and milestones, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Then you continue from level 35 to 40, then from 45 to 50. Some people get from level 1 to level 50 in 15 hours. I mean. That's what I will do. I will be the first 50s levels on Europe. Check my stream. Prove me wrong. Questing itself is pretty simple, but standard for all Korean MMORPGs. So you have a main quest. It's a cool, interesting story with some cinematics and side stories and some lore. You have a side quest, which is the blue quests. They are on the territories. And from some events, like you need to talk with some NPC and the quest will be opened. Uh, let's call the main quest purple ones, which is the signature for the main quests. And let's call the side quest the blue ones. So you have different achievements. When you complete on one territory different blue quests, you can get the achievement. An achievement will get you some kind of resource of the game. It could be consumable items. It could be items for the craft, it could be items to upgrade your skills, to upgrade your armor, to upgrade your weapon, which is super cool. It could be gear itself, like accessories. So we call it a codex system, if I'm not wrong. And it looks like it's you don't need that because you need to level 50 as fast as possible, but then you will come back to all these codexes because to get some of the upgrades to your skills and weapon at some point of time in the end game is pretty hard. So you will come back and you will do all the codexes to get all the small pieces, you know, to help you the progress. And also you have codexes like you go to the dungeon and you need to kill same boss like 10 times or you need to block some attacks or you need to be blown by some attacks of the boss. And people doing that to get the codex because after the codex you get the some items for the progression. And let's talk about the progression in this game. So to progress in this game, like in all MMORPGs, you need gear, which is armor, weapon and accessories. You need skills, which is in this game is additional part and additional direction of the progression of the character. And you need upgrade all of this. How it happens? With gear, it's pretty simple. You need to drop gear from the monsters or to craft it. Some of the specific gear could be crafted from the specific items from the bosses. Like for instance, when you go to the dungeon, you can drop any of the gear from the boss and also you can drop the box. From this box, you will choose purple, which is epic, right? Yeah, you will choose epic weapon of your choice. So the game helps you to get some of the items because the drop chance, like in all Asian MMORPGs, are super, super, super low. All right, so you dropped your weapon or you bought it from the auction. You have the item. Now you need to upgrade the item. The same goes with armor and the same goes with skills. Let's talk about skills a little bit. 
So you can use two weapons in the same time. Let's take I'm using Staff and Wand. So I have 10 active skills for each weapon and 8 passive skills. And I can use only 12 active skills from the both weapons and only 8 passive skills from the both weapons. So I choose them. And different skills have different type of the level. Some of the skills are green, which is uncommon. Some of the skills are blue, which is rare. And some of the skills are epic. You can't upgrade epic skills to the legendary yet, but you can upgrade the uncommon and rare skills to the epic skills. So to upgrade the uncommon, the green skill, to the rare skill, you need to upgrade it five times. And to upgrade it, each time you need one book for active upgrades for specific weapon, then two books for active upgrades, then three books, then four books, and then five books. To upgrade one skill, you need a lot of books. When you upgrade to the next level, uncommon to rare, you will have additional trait of the skill. And these traits are most crucial and most significant power-ups of your character. So, where all of the skills that you are using as an active and passive, you want them epic. So, you will grind a lot to get these books to upgrade the skills. And also, you will grind a lot to get the upgrade for weapon and for the armor. So, you also have uncommon, rare and epic armor and weapon and accessories and you need different stones to upgrade these pieces it's also you can upgrade green till level six you can upgrade rare till level nine and you can upgrade epic till level nine for weapon and armor and accessories it's growing of the static traits which is all of the things of the stats that you have in the weapon let's take my stuff my stuff adding additional critical attack when you're far from the target and each level and also dexterity and each level of upgrade of my stuff from plus zero to plus nine these stats will be increased so you want to increase the stats a lot and also you can upgrade the traits in the weapon so you can choose the traits of the item and you can choose from the list of the traits and you specifically will choose for your build different traits like for instance you will choose in all of the possible weapon items, weapon and gear and accessories, you will choose the max health. So you will get plus 5k, 6k additional health, which is huge. Or you will choose critical hit, or you will choose something else. I will not explain this in details right now. I already spent a lot of time on that. You can see all of my other videos and it's all there. I will explain all there. But this is the progression of the character. Nobody cares if you level 50, everybody level 50. But the gear and skills, this is the progression. So how we can do this? Let's get to the interesting stuff. You have dynamic events. So by the schedule, every day you have different dynamics event in different zones. An event could be PvP and PvE randomly. Or by some schedule, I don't know. But you go to this event and you compete with others how many monsters you killed in this area and how many items did you get from them, collect and give it to the special NPC. Whoever have a first place, have good rewards, whoever have a 100s or 150s place or without any rank they will get less what they will get from these dynamic events you will get books and crystals so these books you need to upgrade your skills so you want to go to every possible event and you want to grind and you want to compete right so it's like the huge events is a crowded with everybody everybody trying to get as much as possible and if it's pvp it's also the guilds are fighting for that and it gives you huge huge benefit if I have the purple skills and you have the blue skills, it's like you level 30 and I'm level 50. It's a big difference. So you want to go to the dynamic events. And these crystals you can use to craft the books and to craft the stones to upgrade your armor, weapon and accessories. So how can I get the resources for crafting? And how can I get the stones to upgrade my gear? So you have 60 possible contracts at one point of time and you can complete all of them at once. You can take five of them and you do the repetitive quest like kill these mobs, find these resources, kill these mobs, find these resources, do this thing. It's like that every day you do the same stuff for the contracts. But for the contracts, you can get the special boxes for two different resources. The normal resources like stone, wood, and so on, and other type of resources. Special crystals, which you need also to craft things, so you will do it a lot. And also the stones for the upgrade of the gear specifically. This is basically the core gameplay loop from the PvE perspective. So you're doing main quest, you're doing all the codexes and the side quests, which is blue quests. You're making dynamic events by the schedule, if you can. You're doing contracts for all the resources and the stones for upgrade. Like for instance, I choose, okay, I need to upgrade my stuff now. 
So I will grind all the contracts and I will choose specifically the contracts which will give me the stones to upgrade my weapon. And the last one is the dungeons. Dungeons and the raid bosses. So let's talk about dungeons. We have how many? 5 or 6? 50 level dungeons from what you can get specific weapons by some really really bad chance percentage. So you will grind these dungeons every day with a group of 6 people all together with your boys and friends or with randoms. It's pretty simple and pretty fast in these games. You don't, you don't need the cons party to go to the dungeons. Just everybody in the evening trying to spend their dimension tickets or whatever it's called. The thing is like how many times you can get to the dungeon to try to drop something from the boss. You can drop something from the boss itself and you also open the chest in the end which will give you the, the crystals, the upgrades, the recipes or the box with weapon which you can choose and you will grind the dungeons. The last one is raid bosses. So we have arc raid bosses which are open world. Everybody go, the whole server goes there, they will kill the bosses. And it's like a one item will drop for everybody for thousands and thousands of people. So mm. most likely it will be not for you. But sometimes these bosses are PvP. So guilds will try to kill everybody else and drop this for them or alliances. So we have normal bosses. We have arc bosses, which drop super good items for the sets, you know, some unique stuff. And you also have a guild raid bosses. So you have a guild, your level of the guild is growing. And with all new levels of the guild, you have new raid bosses in your guild house and you can do it every once in a while so like five bosses a week but i also have a video about that check it on my channel everything that i'm describing right now you have on my channel this is the pd activities of the game now let's talk about a little bit of about the graphics it's unreal 4 but if you ever will jump to this you know flying whale and just look around what is happening in this world the world is gorgeous the game is super cool, good looking graphics, you have really interesting effects from your spells. It's Korean style, so it's a little bit too flashy if you will compare to a World of Warcraft or something like that. But it looks cool. The characters are good, the armors and weapons design pretty good, the environment itself and monsters. It's just like pleasant to play this game and you will grind in this game, like in Black Desert Online, right? So the game should look pretty, pretty decent to grind a lot and this game looks pretty decent the graphics in this game like i will say 8 from 10 or 8.5 from 10 for the mmorpgs the graphics is pretty good the game is totally open world like totally open world you have dungeons which is instant dungeons where you go with the group but you also have an open dungeons where everybody goes and grind mobs you know just an open world it's not instant all the PvP activities, most of the things in the game are open world. If you want to go to the Lizard Island, you know, to grind some mobs for the good loot, you need to go by the flying whale. You need to wait, you know, by like schedule when the whale will fly, because otherwise you can't get to this island. It's open world and you can feel this open world. And then you go to this island, somebody kill you and you come back from the city. So the feeling of the open world in this game is good. You can see a lot of people all this and all the activities that you are doing will be around crowds and crowds of people so that's also good like 9 from 10. Now let's talk about combat. Combat in the game pretty decent. You have different classes basically you have seven different weapons you can combine two of them at the same time and also you can switch skills for instance even with my staff and wand I have two three different skill presets for PvE, for PvP and for the dungeon healing. It's not super you know different but you also have the mastery of each weapon and which weapon is the primary you have a mastery for this weapon it's passive skills which can get a lot to you like uh, resistance from silence and silence from edges are really bad bad thing from the daggers or additional mana regeneration or additional evasion so you choose the mastery you choose different skills and you also have two weapons and some of them you can combine like take not stuff but take sword and shield which is tank and one so you became the paladin or take stuff and ball, so you will be like annihilation machine, glass cannon. System is pretty interesting, and you can't just switch it. Okay, I today I don't want to be healer shaman. I want to be, and you can just switch it. Yeah, to switch to other weapon, you need to grind all the skill books. You need good skills, right? So it will take a lot of time, and also the gear, which is focused on specific game style that you have, right? So it's pretty diverse, and the combat itself, I will say. It's typical if you played Lineage 2, it's the same, but with more possibilities. You can jump, you can fly, 
Yeah, by the way, you can fly. The really interesting mechanic is because some of the objectives, PvP objectives, are high or really below of the other surface. So all your guild can fly and drop in the center of the enemy and do cool stuff. So with all these possibilities and take the good mechanics of PvP and the combat itself from Lion Edge, because you have different skills, you can use them, you can collect from your armor different types of resistance like you can collect that really huge silence resistance so you will be not silenced or you can make your evasion really high it will help right so you choose the play style and you focus on this play style and you play it and the classes itself yeah you have meta classes like daggers like bows and tanks they are super huge right now in the same time you need healers so in the huge sieges mages with the heals are also dominating because you can drop the meteor on the huge bunch of people and they will be almost dead but it's the huge damage from your side so the combat feels interesting really impactful you can feel all the skills that you are doing and you grind a lot so that's pretty good also combat i really like the combat in this game so let's talk about end game loop it's a pvp so what we have as a pvp by the schedule, like I said, we have different dynamic events, and most of them are PvE, but some of them are PvP. Small scale, middle scale PvP on the things. It is not like proper, everybody gather around, we will go to the PvP. No, if you want to have fun, if you want to test things as a PvP group, if you want to try to get this event, so you, some of your guildmates will win, you also will do this PvP, and it's pretty fun and interesting. Just look at other of my videos and other videos of the Tron of Liberty. It's pretty fun. The PvP in this game is pretty fun. So this is the small scale PvP. But also we have the points of interest in this game. And this is the Boonstones and Reefstones and the castles. Let's talk about Boonstones and Reefstones. Boonstones are the things that by the schedule will be possible to conquer by some of the guild. How it happens? You need to kill everybody in the round around the boonstone. Then your guild leader need to stay there some period of time. So boonstone will be yours. But in this 30 minutes of the PvP, every guild can come and try to siege the boonstone, kill you. And you have many different boonstones on the map. Sometimes it's all of them open at the same time. So it's mind games. What beach guild will go where, what alliance will go where. And you have guilds like 64 people, uh, but alliance could be from four guilds, right? So it's about 200 plus people. And you have Zerg, many alliances all together, fighting with other alliances. So basically it's like 2,000 people versus 2,000 people. And you spread the guilds and, you know, the scouts. And it's like mind games, which boonstone in the end you will try to conquer. This is pretty fun. This is the end game. And Boonstones give to your guild some traits like additional critical attack, additional attributes or additional gold or additional something. Sometimes it's Boonstones near the raid bosses. So it's additional raid boss, which is additional, additional item every day. Cool for the guild. And you have the raid bosses by the schedule, which also your guild can kill everybody. It's not even possible, but you know, your alliance can kill everybody and drop this item to the alliance members. And you have a siege. So at this moment, we have siege every two weeks. It's a huge, huge event. When all of the guilds, thousands of people at the same time, doing different mechanics with the huge golems, which attack the castle, with somebody on the walls who protect the castle, the people outside of the wall fighting, and then they resurrect themselves in the castle. So it's a huge event. It's really interesting. It's really good. You need a good PC for that. But if you will have it and you will have a guild, you will have a lot of fun playing the Siege. And Siege will give you a lot of money for the auction, which we will talk about a little bit later, and for just normal money. After the successful Siege, and if you will get the castle, every time when you will get the castle, your guild will be more and more progress in the gear and accessories and skill books and everything and became more and more strong. So you want to participate in this. And you also get some resources and some money not only by the successfully siege the castle but also to siege some part of the castle so it's pretty complex and pretty interesting with all these golems and it's it looks epic it just like looks epic huge amount of people everybody doing something it's really cool so as you understand pvp is the end game of the game and the developers promised us the battlegrounds arenas already we don't know the information about that, but it will be at some point of time in the game. So waiting for that. So it will be solo content for PvP. 
for different classes. What I can say in from the good side and from the bad side, this game is only for the social play. If you are solo, it will be boring, not interesting, and you can't do anything. You can kill some people during the PvP, but what's the point? If you're in the guild, it's interesting. You're going to dungeons, you're going to raid bosses, you fight, you have PvP, you discuss with the boys and girls. So this is the social game. If you are into the guilds or like myself, the introvert, which wants to be, you know, involved to the guild, this is the game for you. If you want to play solo, go and play World of Warcraft. Come on. So this is the game for the social interactions. And it's PvP game. Completely PvP game. Grind and then fun PvP. Now let's talk about controversial topic. Is it paid to win or not? The thing is, you have auction. On the auction, you can buy everything by special auction money. To get special auction money, you need to sell the item that you drop in the world or from the raid boss. And all, not all of the items could be sold, but many of them could be, right? If you want to upgrade your skills and upgrade your gear, you can buy the parts to craft these things, right? If you want, you can buy all of the items and gear from the auction house, but it's super, super, super expensive. Because to upgrade the traits of the gear, like for instance, I drop some super cool, super expensive chest, and it's the best chest in the game, which is Mother Nature chest for the mages. The cost of the chest was about 20,000 of the Lucent, which is the internal auction house currency. To upgrade this chest to all the trades, I need at least nine other chests like that or extraction from this chest, which will cost a lot, like thousands and thousands for each of them. Because one of them will open the trade and others will upgrade the trade. And to get the good trades and trades doing a lot for the gear, you need all of these things. So to buy all of this at this moment, after two, three months from the launch, it's still super expensive and some of the items to get some of the items is like 200k of lucent now you can buy a lucent by real money but the prices is if you want to get this item which is 200k lucent you need to drop about three thousand dollars and it's only one item without trades without anything to gear up fully on the latest gear that you have in the game at the moment you need to spend like ten thousand dollars maybe twenty thousands of dollars if you will just buy it from the shop so is it pay to win or not i will say the following you can drop everything and most of the guys in my guild spent like less than 500 bucks on the game on the battle passes and maybe some of the lucent and they are like top and top on the server i'm completely free i didn't even spend for the battle passes on Car in korea and i'm like a little bit above average and i feel myself in pvp and all the content super good for free so is it pay to win i mean it's the same like in world of grass you have a black market if you want gold you will buy gold but you can't buy some of the items from the raid bosses yeah you need to go there and you need to drop it but you can do it rates with gold when you pay and they just go there and take the item. If you want this, you can get it there, but not officially. Here you can do it officially, but the price is so big. So it will be only like few people on the server can, could be whales. And uh, the thing is, these people will not change the end game of the game. Because end game is the mass and mass PvP. And even if you're the biggest tank in the world, you're staying, nobody can kill you. Eh, freak it. People will just slip you and run forward or if you're the best damage dealer which spent 20k on the game and you kill everybody with one shot yeah three people will come and kill you so it's like it's pay to win yes but it's useless in the game with mass pvp so i don't know i didn't feel that i'm really sad that somebody is spending money on this game i can spend a little bit of money on the battle passes just to make my life easier on some cosmetics and that's all so honestly i will not say that this game is pay to win Judge me, I don't think that that's paid to me. You can get all the items that you want for free with the normal content from the dungeons and from the raid bosses and uh, just you will be slower than others maybe because you will not buy all these cross materials. But one more time, to really get and to be the best of the best by the money, you need to spend a lot of money. So as I said, the guilds in this game are pretty important. This is the main gameplay. This the guilds actually, I can say the guild actually is the end game of this game. The intrigues, and all different, you know, turnarounds and backstabbing each other because when the sieges began, people understood, aha, this is the prophet, this is the reward for the castle, so they will betray each other. And the guilds will 
you know, betray guilds. Alliances changes during these two months is a lot. This is fun. This is fun part of the game. Let's talk, talk about the final thoughts. So we have a bad things also, bots for sure, a lot of bots and you need to grind. The th good thing, the developers during these two months, as developers changed this game so many times. Mages from the, you know, from the bottom hierarchy of the meta became somewhere in like above average and super good on the sieges and they're trying to change things. They do don't just like, okay, nerf this class and do this class better. No, they, okay, the balls and daggers will kill with crit, but mages will do huge AOE attacks and they will have additional skills for AOE, which from on the sieges are really good. What about healers? Healers will heal. Yeah, let's make them heal better. And they try to change things listening to the community. So if Amazon Games will drop this game like Koreans do, and we'll continue everything that Koreans do and we'll have the same version like global version for the Tournament Liberty. I have really good thoughts. It will be really fun to play with the guild for some period of time and it will be the main game for my channel for some period of time when they will drop it. So final thoughts. I think we have a good, not perfect and uh, they have a lot of potential to, for the game. They can improve game a lot with different mechanics, with different activities with different content, like for a solo PvP, for small scale PvP, different types of the activities during the day, not just the schedule and the dungeons. So the potential with the game is big. It looks like developers will continue to deliver. It's really visually, it's super good visually. And the game is super good. The immersion to the world and how it feels and how it looks, the real fantasy world, it's pretty good. Combat system and PvP, pretty nice. Pay to win thing, decide to yourself. I think that it's a decent game. It's a decent game and we should wait and you should try. If you like PvP and if you like the, you know, mass PvP, this is the game for you. If you don't like it, if you want just the solo grind, some quests and items and go to the dungeons with the boys, maybe it's not the best game because it's about something else. Nevertheless, I was happy to see you guys. My name is PLK. And uh, I will continue to grind information about Tron Liberty for you and drop it here in the channel together with other information about other MMORPGs. Drop in the comments what do you think about this game, what do you want from me on next videos and I will definitely drop a few cool videos about the game before the European launch. See ya! Bye!